Yeah, we've got uh, over 2 million, obviously, still without power in the entire state of Florida. Uh, we have more now on the power outages, where uh, this is going to be an issue for some for many days to come. Joining us now, Chief Communications Officer for Florida Power and Light Company, Dave Reuter. Dave, uh, what can you tell us about your customers in terms of how many are still without power? Good morning, Mika. So since the start of the storm, uh, we've had more than 2 million FPL customers affected by power outages. The good news this morning is that we've been able to restore over a million of those already. So that that mm. does mean, however, that we still have 1 million customers without power. Uh, that's predominantly on the west coast uh, of the state, and that's where we've, mm -hmm. of course, seen the biggest effects from the storm. So are there areas where the infrastructure itself has been uh, destroyed and, and what's the timeline on that? Absolutely. So the good news uh, is that uh, if you look at the West Coast, while we still have a million customers out, um, we, we were there yesterday assessing the damage. We're continuing to do that. That's going to continue over the next couple of days. One of the silver linings is that our transmission structures held up very well in this storm. We've put significant investment into our grid to harden it uh, over the last 10 years, and those investments paid off because the transmission structures held even in almost a Category 5 storm. That's a a good, a good sign because then we can concentrate on getting into those communities that are waterlogged right now where we've seen the flood damage and after we do that we'll be able to assess exactly how long it's going to take to get those customers power back on. And so in those areas that you uh, as you describe waterlogged uh, are the grids destroyed or what do we know? So some, uh, you know, some certainly have uh, serious water damage. Um, that's what the assessments we're doing right now um, are yeah. telling us. Uh, we've had our drone, drone teams out over the last day and we'll do so today as well to start to get into some of those areas. The, the reality is we just haven't even been able to get to certain areas on the West Coast because of the level of destruction. Mm -hmm. And how, how many areas, how wide an area uh, where, uh, are there where the level of destruction is, is significant, where you might be make, making people wait for quite some time? Well, if you look at the West Coast and you start at Fort Myers and you go south all the way to Sanibel, those obviously are the areas that, uh, that were the most affected. Um, those are the areas that we're spending most of our time in right now in terms of assessments, the drone team being out, um, trying to, to get us some eyes in the sky, help us understand what the facilities look like. Obviously, if you're talking about uh, you know, facilities like substations that may have been waterlogged, um, those are going to require um, complete rebuilds in those areas, uh, and we're simply not going to know for the next uh, you know, couple of days exactly what the impact could be. Th on the flip side, if you look at the rest of the state, um, in the northeast part of the state, we should know by the end of today exactly when mm -hmm. we'll have all customers restored. And then in the southeast, um, in the tri-county area, which was affected because of the storm force winds that, that they saw as well, we actually have restored all of those customers today. All right, so the question mark remains over Southwest Florida. Chief Communications Officer for Florida Power and Light, Dave Reuter, thank you very much. Willie?